Hey guys, welcome back. This is phase two of the upgrade series for the Echo One M4 Platinum Edition. This gun already has a Mad Bull 603 steel tight bore barrel in it. That's an M4 length barrel. It's got the ceramic 8mm bearings from Modify, which I argue are the smoothest bearings on the market. Actually, they are. There's no competition whatsoever. The Modify cylinder head, I did put a sort of thing pad on there. And it's got the Modify Ultra piston with seven metal teeth. Now today, phase two, we're going to put some cool parts in here. We're just going to focus on the gearbox today. Phase three, we'll do some other cool stuff. So let's get going. Now today, we're just going to focus on the gearbox. On phase three, we'll do some other cool things, but you'll have to wait and see what those are, so stay tuned. First item is first, we have some max gears from Echo One. These are the 13-1 ratio, so they are high speed. We have a Modify M120 spring. I'm hoping to get about 400 to 410 feet per second out of this. An Echo One basic MOSFET. These rarely have problems, and they're very easy to install. And finally, the Echo One max torque motor. This guy's a metal back, a O-hole pinion instead of a D-hole, and it actually has a lot of torque. So I'm really curious to try this out in the gun. All right, so once again, I have the gearbox open of the Platinum Edition M4 from Echo One. First thing we're going to install is the gears. After that, I'll go ahead and take out the electrical system and install the new one. And once that's all done, I'll install the new spring. After that, we can get everything back together and we can get the new motor put in. All right, the original sector gear here on the right had the sector chip on it before, but because the new one did not, I actually took it and I transferred it over. So what's the difference between the stock gears and the upgrade Echo One gears we're installing? There's several differences. Let's start with the ratio. The ratio of the original gears is about 18-1, which is about the stock ratio of most gears. The new ratio is going to be 13 to 1, so that means our gears are going to spend quite a bit faster. That means that the rate of fire is going to increase. That's why these are called high-speed gears. Now, on top of that, the stock gear set is an auto shimming system, so only certain parts of the gears have to be shimmed. That means the you shim the bottom and the spring will put pressure on it so you don't really have to shim the top. It's not really auto shimming. It's more like getting to shim part of the uh, gear instead of the full thing. The uh, upgrade gear set we're installing is not an auto shimming system, so you do have to shim the top and the bottom of every gear like you usually do in every other gear set. All right, that actually took a bit longer than expected. The bevel gear here and the spur gear were actually very easy to shim. This is getting the height of the sector right, which oddly enough took a while. The uh, little bar that sticks up that contacts the tappet plate kept hitting the side of the gearbox. So finding a right height between that and the spur gear here did take some time. But after a little bit of painstaking work, we got it all worked out just fine. Now we've got the new Echo One MOSFET drop-in system here, and there is a difference between the two trigger switch assemblies themselves. This one does not have the contacts on the back here for the selector plate while the Echo One version does. So what I'm going to do is actually just use the original Echo One trigger switch here and transplant the wires over. That way everything works out just peachy. Now guys, soldering and shimming can be kind of tedious, so if you guys are new to it or don't know what you're doing, please have someone do this that knows what they are doing. So you're probably asking, what's going on with the extra wiring here, the red wires, the different configuration of this? This is basically, um, it's a very basic MOSFET. It has no programming or nothing like that. Now with this MOSFET, instead of actually um, all the electricity running through the trigger switch like it normally does, it just acts as a relay pretty much. So it, the idea is it kind of sends a signal to your MOSFET saying, okay, you can send energy from the battery to the motor. So this just acts as a um, basically a signaling device to your MOSFET. All right, so we have a new gear set installed here. So always, you know, check your angle of engagement. It was corrected originally. So in theory, it should still be pretty good. And it looks like it's not that bad at all. And since we installed this sector chip, we really need to make sure that it's cycling smoothly and everything. And it looks like it's spinning around pretty well there, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. 
So here we have our two springs. The one on the left is our stock spring. It's getting about 360 feet per second on average, and it is an irregular pitch spring. So you have the sections in the middle and in the back where it is a little more tightly coiled. And the spring on the right is our Modify M120. Now with some luck, that should be getting us about 400, 420 feet per second and the most. I'm looking for the low, low 400s. Now, even for experienced techs like myself, it can be a pain closing up gearboxes sometimes. So you want to make sure you have some sort of guide rod like this. This is actually a hex key screwdriver, and I have a spacer here, and it works insanely well. Some people use small screwdrivers, but I find the bigger the handle and longer the rod, it is actually easier. So if you have a long rod like this, you can actually depress your piston too, so everything stays very easily down and it's extremely easy to get the gearbox back together. So let's go ahead and put this all back in here. Now, everything has been properly greased and shimmed and everything. Now I'm just going to line this uh, anti-reversal latch up, which can be a complete pain sometimes, and then we can get this guy all back together. Now another really big thing about putting new wiring in your gun is making sure that it does fit in this groove in the bottom here properly. So you don't want it sticking out so when you put your motor in you end up having to rip it out and that can really damage your wiring. So make sure it is nicely recessed in this groove or else you can really regret that later on. Now having a different motor in your gun can mean the world sometimes can mean the difference between getting a thousand rounds out of your gun on a battery and getting 1500 rounds. It really depends. Um, some, ba some motors drain batteries real fast, others are really good on them. Some motors don't heat up very quickly, others heat up like crazy. It's really going to vary depending on the motor. So the stock Echo 1 motor here actually has a plastic back. Our new Echo 1 motor actually has a metal back, so it's a pretty cool difference. They both have O-hole pinions over the uh, D-hole pinions instead. I really prefer these. They're actually much easier to take off, uh, especially with a pinion tool. Now, the torque on the original motor is okay. It'll pull the spring in there just fine, and maybe a little bit more. But it's really not a whole lot. It's a very stock torque motor. Now, the torque on this new Echo 1 motor is quite a bit there. You can pull, tell this thing's going to pull an M150 spring plus easily. But because we're pulling an M120 spring on high speed gears, it's going to put a little bit more uh, stress on the motor. So we really need that extra torque in there. Now, one more fairly important thing to note is the length of each wire. Sometimes when I get these uh, basic FETs, the length of each wire tends to vary. And I've had ones where the red wire is shorter than the black one, and it just messes everything up, and it ends up being a huge pain to solder. But this one, the lengths were actually very good. They're a little bit longer than necessary, but I'd really take that over being shorter any day, so this is a very good drop-in. Alright, now I've got everything hooked up. Uh, I have not switched it over to Dean's yet, so I'm running... <laughs> oddly enough, all my batteries are Dean's. So this guy has a large Tamiya plug on here. That's running to an adapter for a mini Tamiya, and that's running to an adapter for a Dean's. So the rate of fire is not exactly what it will be after I hook it up to Dean's, just uh, straight Dean's. But... This gives us a good idea. I have it hooked up to an 11.1 volt right now, which is awesome, by the way, with the MOSFET that's installed on there, the torque motor, the speed gears, and the 120 spring. I've adjusted the motor height a little bit, so let's give it a try. That is fantastic. Very smooth, very quick to respond. Great rate of fire. It's going to be even a little bit faster on just straight Dean's hookup. So let's go ahead and get everything back together now, and I'll go ahead and quit, do a quick chrono test. All right, before we proceed with uh, chronoing the gun, I'll admit I've never been a fan of quick disconnects. Uh, they're just kind of a pain, and th those are the little things that would fit right here, and you'd hook up your MOSFET that way. So what I went ahead and did was I chopped those off, I bypassed them, and I actually got the, uh, the wire links to be a little bit better. guys that's it for phase two of these upgrades in the echo 1 m4 platinum edition we threw in a modify m120 spring a new echo 1 super torque motor which oh it's very smooth great trigger response great rate of fire 
an Echo One basic vet, which I did some rewiring to, so it wasn't just a drop in for me. It can be, just depending on the gun. I want to do a little bit more for this gun. And finally, we installed the Echo One 13 to 1 high speed gears. They're very smooth in this, hardly any gear noise, if any at all. It's extremely nice. So that's it for phase two. Like I said, phase three is going to involve some hop up upgrades. Right now, we just have the steel barrel on there, but we're going to throw some other parts in there and maybe one or two other things. So come back, check out phase three because it's going to get even cooler.